Well, well, well. Look who appears to be crawling back with their tail between their legs. I remember we touched upon in the last episode of the podcast of the Plutonium show about how narcissists by their very nature are so blissfully unaware of the optics when it comes to their behavior. In a sense, they're fools because fools have no concept of anything really. How can you successfully navigate the world and make wise choices when the only perspective that you have is your own twisted, warped version? Now, the conversation that we had on the Plutonium show revolved around Megan's wedding and the optics about how, you know, she never even considered that inviting 200 people, strangers, whilst only inviting a single family member, might not necessarily translate very well, you know, optics wise. And the wedding topic came about because we were talking about the poor optics of her having a meet and greet with fans. And it looked like she was loudly exclaiming in the middle of a speech during the opening of the Navy SEALs training facility. Then as I sat down to work on this next video, I quickly realized that when it comes to Meghan Markle, the list of uh, poor optics, we'll call it, the poor optics list is actually quite endless. So here are just a few examples for you, listed in chronological order as best I could. And yes, we're gonna get to that whole Christmas invitation, worry not. But do feel free to chime in in the comment section with even more situations where the optics were, uh, <laughs> you know, they left a lot to be desired. All right, are we ready? Let's go. The very first example arose on the 8th of November, 2016, when the palace released on behalf of Prince Harry, that now very infamous and scathing statement attacking the media and the public for their alleged racism and sexism and harassment of a woman who was still relatively unknown at the time. And this was only one week after their relationship was officially announced. Now, not only was there really little to no evidence of such harassment, you know, against an unknown, but we learned from Valentine Lowe's courtiers that Meghan Markle pretty much blackmailed Harry and forced him to release that statement. So she really wanted it to be out there. And she did this <laughs> all while continuing to bait the media through her own Instagram account, you know, posting photos, hinting at the relationship whenever she could, and having her own PR team leak stories. Oh, and of course, let's not forget arranging pap strolls. So for a woman who was so traumatized and who was so scarred and impacted by all that attention, leading on the media at the same time, off your own volition, on your own platforms where you have total control, wasn't exactly the best idea when uh, it comes to optics. Next was the wedding. I've already talked about how the optics were just really poor. You know, even for people like myself, at the time I really wasn't interested at all in the royal family and I just tuned in because it was a convenient time here in Australia to watch the wedding. But even I was like, wait, she's only got the one family member? Something seems off. Then there was of course the infamous pregnancy announcement at Princess Eugenie's wedding. Princess Eugenie, who was supposedly Meghan Markle's very close friend, pre-Harry even. I mean, if this is what she's willing to do to uh, a close friend, I would shudder to think what she's capable of doing to her worst enemy. Oh, wait, I don't even have to think. She's already been doing it. Then we hear them turn down invitation after invitation from the queen, starting very early on from Archie's birth, where they claimed, oh no, Archie was too young to fly, except there must have been something very specific and peculiar about the route to Balmoral, because Archie was fine to fly at the same time to Europe for a few holidays. You know, I don't know what they take holidays from. Their whole life is a holiday. But yeah, again, the optics were not considered. Next comes the passport story. And I'm putting this chronologically early on, even though it was mentioned in Oprah, 
because her traveling was happening early on when she was still a working, or I should say a senior royal, because let's face it, the woman barely worked. But she famously spouted that whole story of they took my passport away and my keys and everything and I was trapped in the palace, essentially. Completely forgetting the fact that her multiple trips to Europe and the United States <laughs> were public knowledge, with photographic evidence included. Then of course there's the big one, right? The royal family is racist. We had to flee for our lives in the dead of night from the power-hungry tyranny and jealousy of the British monarchy, while Queen Elizabeth was still very much alive and head of said monarchy. Oh, but they were so traumatized that they couldn't even help holding on to their titles and naming their daughter after the head of such a racist monarchy before very conveniently passing on these racist titles to their children after they had publicly proclaimed that their children wouldn't be getting said titles because of said racism. Such chef's kiss optics. Then we have Finding Freedom, the book that they had nothing to do with, remember? The book that they tried so hard to hide their involvement with going as far as to lie in sworn statements to a court of law. And uh, judging from the headlines surrounding their involvement, or lack thereof, with Endgame, I think they haven't learned from that mistake. Or perhaps fools that they are, only able to view the world from their own perspective, they think the rest of us are just as foolish. I could seriously go on, so I'm going to start putting them down in bullet points. Wearing neutral colors everywhere she goes, long after she left the royal family. Most recently, at this Power of Women event, which I seriously don't know why she was even there, and where she very embarrassingly was glued to the red carpet to take her photograph, because that's her oxygen, it's what she lives for, to the point that she refused to budge. I mean, you all saw this by now, but my goodness, the secondhand embarrassment. We go on. Preaching about the environment while using private jets like we use cars. Preaching about uplifting communities and the importance of family. People, don't forget the importance of family, says the woman who has left her father for dead for absolutely no reason. Said the woman who has now successfully not only driven a wedge between herself and her own family, but between her husband and his family, who were once upon a time quite close-knit. Preaching about feminism when she is literally the antithesis of what it means to be a feminist. Meaning in my books, an independent, strong, and capable woman. Last I checked, a living leech didn't fall under that definition. And most recently in New York City, you know, because they had the audacity to come back there not too long after that catastrophic car chase that never was, they participated in a talk about online bullying and harassment and how to curb it. I mean, really, two people who have been accused of the most horrific bullying themselves, driving staff to the point of tears and PTSD, people who know about their Sussex squad or the Sugars or whatever they're called today, know how they harass people and bully them online. They had the audacity to sit there and participate. The optics, not too good. Because when you're that narcissistic, when you're that self involved. You literally don't even have the ability to consider the optics. They don't know what optics are. And if there's one thing that they lack more than empathy, humility, and subtlety, which I'll touch on that a little bit later, it's self-awareness. And I'm no psychologist, but I believe that self-awareness is somehow connected to empathy, the ability to relate to others. Because when you can't relate to others, when you're unable to because of your own narcissism, how can you put yourself in other people's shoes? How can you have any self-awareness if you have no concept of how your behavior looks to the outside world? Because you're incapable of viewing things from an outside perspective. It is clear that since they keep repeating the same behavior over and over and over again, completely disregarding the very concept of optics, they do this because they believe that they're perfect. <laughs> More like perfectly foolish, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of foolish, in a very subtle chef's kiss, subtlety, move, which was probably overlooked by the entire planet, the Sussexes have let it be known that they would be more than happy to spend Christmas at Sandringham with the racist and sexist and jealous and hateful and Empire 2.0 royal family this year. If an invitation were to be extended, that is. You know, they don't want to <laughs> overstep their boundaries now, do they? I'm sorry, is it just me? Or does it sound like they'd be doing the royal family a favor by gracing them with their presence? Now, rather than the will they, won't they, there has been news already put out, I don't know if it's actually straight from the palace, that they're indeed not going to be invited this year. Maybe King Charles truly has finally had enough, especially after news of the phone call that they supposedly had with him for his 75th birthday got leaked instantaneously. And I say supposedly because there are doubts that it even happened. So it could actually be just a false story put out there to uh, revive the royal connections. But the way I see it, if it did happen, it's actually worse because it shows King Charles that they're still using him and using the family for clout and for content. Why else would they leak news of the phone call, a private phone call to the media? There are also rumors that Prince William put his foot down and basically said that if they were to be there for Christmas, he would be spending Christmas with his wife's family instead. And you know what? If that's true, bravo, William, bravo, because I am sick and tired of people saying, it doesn't matter what they do to you, they're family. No, no, there is a line. There is a line. Family is meant to love you, not abuse you especially on a public scale. And if it has to be Prince William who draws the line because King Charles is too old and too soft, then so be it. Somebody's got to step up and put Meghan Markle in her place. I mean, it's about time someone did it because clearly this is a person who has gone on their entire life treating people this way without any repercussions. But if King Charles does cave in and does extend an invitation to them, well, at this point, we're well beyond the fool me once phase of the story. This is more like fool me a thousand times. <laughs> so at this point, if the king still can't see through the charade of theirs and how they're either trying to come back, you know, with their tail between their legs because they failed, their grand Mexit plan basically is a story of failure to launch, or perhaps they're once again using them for clout and content. It's not like they haven't done it before. But if this is the case, if they're going to be invited, then King Charles would be wise to remember that leopards can't change their spots. I mean, why do they suddenly want to get invited when they were extended invite after invite, including Christmas of 2019, which they refused to even spend with the royal family. They refused to spend that in the UK. They went off to Canada instead. Why? Why? They knew that the queen didn't have that much longer. You know, she was in her 90s. They knew that Archie would probably not have that much time with her. And even his great grandfather, Prince Philip. Seriously, the audacity of it all, though. It all comes back to a lack of awareness, never considering the optics. Because this is a couple who have spent the last four years trashing this family over and over and over again throwing every weapon their way. And now without even a feigned attempt at subtlety, they plaster it all over the news, bright as day. Please invite us. Forget everything we've done. I mean, we've forgotten about it, right? They forget everything. They've forgotten that they collaborated with Omid Scobi, <laughs> even though their involvement was quite heavy, by the way. So if they can conveniently forget anything that potentially incriminates them or, you know, paints them in a bad light, why can't we? Why can't the royal family? Well, I'll tell you why. Because unlike them, we're not fools. Unlike them, we have perspective. We remember. And thus, <laughs> we can see right through their BS. The only question is, and I say this with all due respect, can King Charles see through it too? Or is this going to be another case of, oh, King Charles is just playing the long game? I mean, how long is this game going to last? 
He's getting up there in age himself. He's gonna have to tap out of this game at one point. And finally, to those who say, but they're family, how dare you stand in the way or be against rather a family reconciliation. And to that I'd say, first of all, Meghan Markle has a family. A family that has, as far as we know, done nothing to wrong her. Her father embarrassed himself, but he didn't do it on purpose. He just tried to make himself look better for her or even potentially for him. I don't know him, but is that really a crime? Trying to boost your profile in the public eye because you know, you've been thrust into it now in your old age. So if this is about family, why doesn't she try to mend the rift with her own family? All she has to do is get on a private jet, you know, those seem to always be available to her, fly down to Mexico and meet her father. Of course, bring along your children, his grandchildren, so that he can spend some time with them before he dies. And leading on from that, these two, Meghan and Harry, don't even know what family is. Families don't air their dirty laundry in public and make careers out of destroying one another. They're not family. They're serpents. And if you let a serpent in your midst, well, you better make sure you prepare an antidote because they're definitely going to bite. And that's it. That's all I have to say on this. It is a developing story. So uh, stay tuned, I suppose. Fingers crossed the royal family knows what they're doing because I think we can all see it from a thousand miles off at this point, right? All right, see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.